Well, hello YouTube. I hope you can see me. This is Ron. I've got one or two videos on uh, on YouTube. But anyways, today I am working on my 2004 Mercury XS. As you can see right there. Hopefully you can see everything. That's it right there. Anyways, the issue has been giving me is the oil alarms for the tank. It's not pumping oil from the bigger tank to the smaller one, which is right there. So we were out in a, our annual salmon lake trout derby here at Marathon Ontario this past weekend. And uh, we made a run 15 miles out. And just before we got there, to our fishing spot the alarm went off and but that's okay we were prepared to uh, manually add oil to the uh, to the main tank on the motor so we were prepared so we were fine on that part but I've been dealing with this this is the third season last year was pretty good I only did it a couple times and then for some reason it works but uh, this year yeah it's been doing it just about every time I've been out so the problem or the diagnosis I've been doing it we've taken lines apart here's my tank right there so this line here is the line the oil line to the from the reserve tank or the big tank to the main tank on the motor this outer line right here is the this one is the air line from the motor from the motor to there, because it runs off uh, air pressure, air pressure from the crankcase, which I found out yesterday. I've watched YouTube videos and nobody's really gone into what I did on this. I'm hoping it's fixed. I got the oil tank right full. We'll see if it lasts, hopefully. And I will keep you posted. So anyways, I've taken this line apart I don't know how many times cleaned out that screen that's down in the tank cleaned it out cleaned it out cleaned it out it start pumping oil but I want to do it for a few seconds and then stop no idea what's going on checking the pressure on this now from my owner's manual or shop manual that I do have which is right here so this one right here so, from what I can understand, it's supposed to be putting out 10 PSI. But I'm not getting 10 PSI, so I don't know what's going on. Um, I think the motor's got like probably about 700 hours on it. So, anyways, today we've been running lines or checking lines. Been dis disconnect this line right here. That line comes from... The crankcase, that's the air line, pushing it all the way through there, diagnose that. This outer line here, if I can see, hopefully you can see, this one right here with the tie wraps or zip ties, that's the oil line from the tank up to the motor. So we, fig so we figured those out, Oops, excuse me. So we took everything all apart. Excuse me, I got a walk around compressor and all that's right here. Everything's all off. So we did everything. We got the line off here. It pumped. I put a new filter in. I thought maybe maybe the filter was plugged. Put a brand new filter in. I watched it pump oil into the filter right off the hop. And then it would stop. So, I, like I said, I didn't know what was going on. Tried it. Took the line apart. Cleaned things apart everything no go so end up taking off the airline right there again got the gauge out pressure gauge it would give me just below 5 psi but it would pump for a few seconds and then stop so i don't know if i gotta still gotta replace which i'm gonna 
I'll get them off Amazon if I can. The O-rings for these two here. I'll replace those. This line here still needs the zip ties. So I'll put those on after here. But anyways, trying to diagnose of what's going on. So I hopefully I found the issue. I'm still not getting 10 PSI. I'm getting about five and a half now. So if it's come up a little bit, we'll see what happens. I put the pressure gauge on after and fired up the motor, but I'm going to show you what I did. So all this mess of wiring right in here, if you can see right there, I don't know if you can see my finger right there. So anyways, that comes off the crankcase. That's the line that I took off over over there this is the line so anyways this is a check valve in here and this fitting this check valve so i took the hose off go to take it off go to take this off it was loose so i don't know how long it's been like that for it or did it back out or was it like that from the factory there is some kind of type of thread locker on it but it was really loose so, and this hose was really easy to pull off even with the zip tie on it. So, I took that out, took it out, cleaned it out, found out it's a check valve. So, air goes in, comes in from the motor, through the line, but can't go back into the crankcase. So, cleaned it out with the uh, uh, brake cleaner, washed it out, blew it out, did everything, and connected everything and so as soon as it did that this only took a couple of seconds to fill up and start over overflowing had the cap loose obviously I just tightened down the cap when she started overflowing because she came out pretty quick now now I don't know if that's a, a, if it's a permanent fix or a temporary fix. But to get to that brass fitting, unfortunately, you got to take the cowling apart. So the cowling's there. Take it all apart. I wish I had some more. Oh, I might, oh I do got some degreaser. I'm going to clean that up. Clean them up before I put them back together. But then to run all these all this mess of wiring back into place got to do that so i thought i would show this before i put everything back together because like i say you may if you having issues like i'm having you may want to check this brass fitting to make sure it's not loose make sure it's not plugged i don't know i was able to blow through it before and after just with my breath and uh but uh, yeah, I don't know what the pressure on that check valve is supposed to be, but it blows, you gotta push through it. It doesn't blow easy, it's not a, it's not a hose. It's a check valve in there, so. But I used uh, up to 50 pounds of PSI after I cleaned it the, to get it, to blow it through. There's a screen on it, so be careful. There is a little screen on the end of that that goes inside the motor. So hopefully you can really see that. So anyways, like I say, like I say, I've been doing this for three years, or this is the third season, and uh, I'm getting awfully tired of it. I'm really looking at buying a new motor, but you know what, to be honest, I don't like the looks of the, of the new Mercury's. Uh, they look too boxy, but that's my own opinion. I'm not knocking anybody that likes the looks of them. That's just me. <clears throat> but uh yeah anyways um any questions leave them in the comments uh today is june monday june 17th 2024 so i will get this posted uh hopefully within the next day or so and uh i hope this helps anybody else that uh <clears throat> is going through the same issues i've been going through and uh I love my Optimax. It's a good motor, strong. It's fairly fast. 
It uh, probably needs a few other little things. I don't know. I've, some about fuel rail seals. I may end up, <coughs> excuse me, may end up having to do something like that because it used to go faster. For some reason, I've lost uh, about four mile an hour. Or so I've lost about four mile an hour or so over the years. I've had this since uh, 2012, so 12 years. It's been problem free. I've never had to bring it to a dealer, but if this doesn't solve the issue, I may have to go to the dealer. But anyways, okay. You guys stay safe. Catch, in the, catch some fish. And uh, any questions, let me know. I will see you later. Bye.